Hi, everybody. I am with a very special guest, Ted Brower from Health Masters. That's in healthmasters.com. We'll talk more about his company a little later in the broadcast because they've got something for everybody. And Doug Hagman and I are living proof of that emphasis on living. Well, Ted has some very important information that he wants to bring to us that I'm anxious to share with our Common Sense listening audience. Ted, welcome to the show, and tell me what's up. Well, Dave, you know, we've had a lot of discussions on your show, off your show, as friends, you know, with Hagmans, with everybody, as to who's running the world, who's running the planet. Now, I'm not talking about the governments or the corporations. I'm talking about who is pulling the strings, who's behind all this horrible stuff that we see going on with this child pedophilia the horrible stuff going on with child sacrifice, child sex trafficking. Who's involved in all of this? Now, I know a lot of us say, well, it's the mafia or it's the mob. Who's involved past that point? Because Ted Gunderson found very clearly that there was there were groups of people in California that were conducting human ritual sacrifice on an ongoing basis, and he exposed it. He was a former head of L.A. County's FBI. Yes. And you can watch his stuff online. He'll talk a lot about what I'm going to talk about tonight, but not in the detail that I'm going to talk about, Dave. So that's the kind of stuff I want to talk about tonight. The who in the world is really calling the shots? Who's running it? Who's protecting the pedophiles and why? That's uh, quite a mouthful. And I'll tell you, Ted, you're getting into dangerous territory, my friend, because pedophile investigators end up being suicided, uh, such as the late Georgia State Senator Nancy Schaefer. When she took this issue international, she got, uh, shall we say, suicided in a murder-suicide with her husband. He shot her in the back and then shot himself in the back of the head. That's an unlikely scenario. So, Ted, tread carefully, my friend. But well, I'm not, gonna na- I'm not going to name any names except for Lucifer. <laughs> He's the only one who's getting, <laughs> getting pushed out on this one. But uh, let me, let's do it. But on tonight's show, I'm going to give you some challenging information, but it'll be also a message of hope. Tonight, I'm going to go deep into the world of planetary rulers. Not only are we going to discuss their control, but and yes, who controls them. But always remember, we need to make sure that we don't operate in fear, Dave, but we operate in the realization that we can do all things through Christ. So tonight, don't get overwhelmed, but realize that you've been bought with a price and you've been called according to God's purpose. Some Christians and New Agers believe that you shouldn't discuss some of these topics that I'm going to discuss discuss and cover tonight because they are too negative or because they are not specifically mentioned in the Bible. Well, Dave, I learned a long time ago, knowledge isn't negative, it's just information, but facts can be horrific. The problem is if we don't discuss the facts or the physics, we cannot properly determine the purpose and the proper course of action for all of us. It's like calling a garden of weeds a garden of weeds. It's what it is. Now, a lot of people say, well, if you call it a you know, garden of weeds instead of a beautiful garden, you're being negative. Well, not initially. If it's a garden of weeds, it's a garden of weeds, but it can become a beautiful garden. But first, the weeds need to be dealt with. Calling it unkept is a negative. It's just a statement of fact. So right. we've got a real big mess right now, Dave, that we need to address and look at and just make people aware of what's going on. First, we need to understand what we're dealing with. This battle is not a battle of flesh and blood, but of forces in the unseen realms. It talks about this in the Bible. Many teachers and pastors and alternative news people don't want to go down this rabbit hole. They only want to investigate events and not the real reason the events occurred, who or what orchestrated the events. This is what's so important that we understand this, that we need to look at who is actually orchestrating these events and why these events are taking place. Our spirit is capable of so much more through Jesus and is so powerful that we most people cannot conceive what we have been given. It's time that we open our eyes and realize that if we work together as Christians in the aggregate, as believers, that there's literally nothing we cannot do or accomplish through prayer and through action. Uh, Dave, I have a plaque on the wall, and it says, Zwei Leben stutzen brechen nie, Gebet und Arbeit heißen sie. Now, for your German listeners, they'll know exactly what that means. It means basically there are two fundamental principles in life that can never be broken. My German grandmother, who was born back in the 1800s, actually hand-carved and hand-burned this plaque, and I still have it here in my office. And see, that's what we need to understand. We have to pray like it's entirely up to God, but we have to work like it's entirely up to us to try to get the stuff taken care of. The government and corporations that we're dealing with on an ongoing basis that you and I are constantly talking about, you know, are not the primary cause of the problems that we face in the United States, though they are a contributing factor. The leaders in most cases of these corporations and governments are just puppets, Dave, who are regularly replaced. We see that now with this 
this this Kenyan who's leaving the White House. In this corporate structure, you see the Bilderbergers, the Rothschilds, the Committee of 300, the international bankers, the Vatican's high level Masonic leaders, etc. These groups do exert considerable control over the worldly systems, but they are not the ones who are in control. They are levels beyond it. And we have to start back in the beginning with the Bible. The creator God created the heavens and the earth, but something happened. And Christians have been taught this, and if you haven't been taught this, you need to know this. There was basically a coup d'etat attempted in heaven, and Lucifer went against God Almighty, against Yahweh himself, and he was cast out of heaven along with approximately a third of the angels. Now, we know that this is going to be into the thousands of angels. We don't know the exact number. But let's stop here for just a moment. You know, Russ Dizdar, who's a friend of mine, he talks about how there are different types of angels, and there's different types of entities, and I agree with him. We need to realize that Yahweh doesn't need your permission, Dave, or my permission, Dave, or anybody who's listening's permission to create a different species of anything anywhere. God doesn't come down here and clear it with us. He's going to make a new type of fish or a new type of bird. He doesn't do that. He can do anything he wants on any planet anywhere in the, in the, in the cosmos. As Christians, this shouldn't be a big stretch because the Bible is filled with encounters of interdimensional beings. So why is this such a big taboo for most Christians. Why will they not talk about interdimensional beings or entities, though they many, many of them believe in angels? Well, it's simply entrenched dogma. We've been taught that we are alone in the universe because that's what our parents were taught, though that is not, I repeat, that is not what the Bible teaches. Bernard Carr from Queen Mary University says it in this way, our consciousness interacts with another dimension. Our physical sensors only show us a three-dimensional universe. What exists in the higher dimension are entities that we cannot touch with our physical sensors. And we see this in the Bible. We see these angels pull up. They show up all of a sudden in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And one of the first things they say to everybody is, fear not, because this must be quite a sight, I guess, when they materialize out of nothing. Even Jesus, when he was in his you know, body after he'd been crucified and resurrected, he walked through a door. So these are entities that we're not familiar with in this level of the universe in our three-dimensional depth, width, and height. So you remember Einstein even postulated the fourth dimension being time, space, and the other dimensions we've talked about all the way up to where God resides. But we need to realize, as I've covered on previous shows, Dave, that our DNA is a coiled helix, basically a Tesla receiving, sending unit that transmit via, via longitudinal and scalar waves interdimensionally. We are basically a bio antenna that through frequencies and light photons, we are connected through quantum entanglement interdimensionally. What that means is that we are created in God's image. Now, please get that clear in your mind if you're listening tonight, because I had to kind of wrap my head around this. We, over the millennia, due to various reasons, have been detuned, so to speak. That's why we're using less than 10% of our brains, and a large portion of our DNA is labeled by scientists as junk DNA because they still don't understand what that DNA is. So the idea that we are alone is simply just wrong. We need to understand that there are all kinds of things going on in other dimensions that we know nothing about. We also need to realize this. Because we're a sending, receiving antenna, we can receive signals from other entities and other dimensions. This is very, very important because if you read in the New Testament, it says that when God, when Jesus, when Yeshua was basically resurrected, he told the apostles to wait in Jerusalem so they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, what that means is basically they would receive, in my opinion, I'm using the scientific vernacular, they would receive a residence lock with the Holy Spirit, who is part of the Godhead, which would allow the Godhead's frequency or authority or power in the infilling to take place, which would allow them to be led by the Holy Spirit. In other words, they were going to be infilled with God himself. This is very important. This is, I'll talk about this later on in the, in the broadcast today. The reality is that when Lucifer and his followers were cast out and invaded the earth, through time they've been known as the serpent gods, the Anunnaki, the snake brothers, the demons, the star people, the jinn, Quetzalcoatl. Now remember this, the serpent gods are considered royal bloodlines of the gods, but I'll talk about that more about that later because that's very important you understand that concept. There are basically different names for, this, for the same group of, of demons or spirits or whatever you want to call them, these demonic entities and Lucifer and the fallen angels, these interdimensional entities. When Constantine in 323 made Christianity the state religion of Rome, he brought us many pagan beliefs into the church. He also removed the book of Enoch from the Bible. 
Now, the book of Enoch is very important that you read through this because the book of Enoch goes into detail about the interdimensional beings, who they were and what they did and what they tried to accomplish while they were here on the earth, including teaching the people on this planet sorcery, including interbreeding with the human beings and basically putting their DNA into us. In fact, it got to a point that it was so bad that the United States, that the entire planet had to be basically flushed by the doggone flood to get rid of all of the fallen DNA or corrupt seed it talks about in the book of Genesis. This is what God had to do the first time. Now, it says again with Jesus, it says, as it was in the days of Noah when the flood took place, so shall it be again upon the returning of the, of the Son of Man or Christ. And this is what we're seeing now. We're seeing all types of chimeras being built in laboratories. We're seeing human DNA experiments. We're seeing humans being mixed with cows and pigs, et cetera, in laboratory settings. We have no idea what our government is doing in their deep underground bases. They have no idea. We can speculate unless we've been there. We don't know. We have certainly no idea what China is doing with their chimera. Russia has now worked with frequency alone in changing DNA. I'm not talking about cutting and splicing genes any longer. I'm talking about using frequency to physically change the DNA. Because what we are, we're a bio-sending receiving unit, and we operate at a specific frequency, a specific, a specific vibration. And every person has a very unique vibration. When our body comes down with something like cancer, it's because that particular group of cells is no longer operating at the same frequency that we were designed to operate at, and it becomes a cancerous mass or it becomes a tumor mass. And if you restore the frequency, like Royal Rife said, and to his research, that if it's all accurate, because I haven't looked at all of it, but I, nor have I seen a Rife machine, he said he could actually kill cancer cells by doing the antithesis frequency into that cancer cells and would cause those cells to rupture and to die and not affect the human organism. So there's all kinds of cancer protocols that have been used for decades. Or this is back in the 30s with Royal Rife. But the problem is, there's no money in that day because there's no money in treating cancer from a natural standpoint. It's easier to do the chemotherapy, the radiation, and the surgery, and it generates a lot more money for the petrochemical medical industry that we have. Now, let's continue with this. This is the type of stuff that, have been, that has been done throughout time. You know, they operate in the shadows through people who were giving themselves over to them and to do their bidding. More on these people in a moment. Now, these are the people that we're talking about. Like in Hollywood, when we have the Kabbalists who wear the red string around their, their wrist, they actually enter into a pact with these demonic entities. And by entering into the pact, they promise to give these demonic entities these sacrifices, these rituals, etc. They do, but then they get stuff back from these demonic entities. Because what they do is they allow the energy fields to change around you. If you understand that we're in a giant sea of energy, and the words that we speak, the thoughts that we think... The prayers that we pray all directly influence time space. Now, I'm going to repeat that because that's, I just said a whole bunch in a very short sentence there. We can literally change the fabric of time space by prayer because prayers are scalar waves, and they readjust the surroundings that you have around you to create a different reality. We are basically in a holographic projection, so to speak. That's what the quantum physicists have said. And because we're in this giant sea of energy, what we speak about, we literally bring about, which the Bible says this, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Now, a lot of the faith preachers, they've touched on this a little bit, but they don't really go into the detail of the physics and how it works, Dave. But what we need to understand is that the, original, the religious establishment, the Roman church in 323, wanted this information covered up, lest we ask too many questions. That's why they took out the book of Enoch and many other of the apocryphal texts. One point here, these demons that, these, that, that we have that came from heaven, they have no creative imagination, but they can take and twist and manipulate God's creation. In other words, they can't create life. They don't have the ability to create life. They can't take the dust of the earth and turn it into a man. They're not capable of doing that, but they can build machines. That they can do. In addition to that, they can take and they can put these different life forms that God put together, and they can mess with them genetically. We see this through the gen genetically modified organisms, the foods, the GMOs they're feeding us, which changes our physiology and our DNA through epigenetics. We can see this through the drugs and the chemicals they're putting into our food supply and the vaccines that they're shooting us up with that are loaded with mercury and thim you know, thimerosal, mercury, aluminum, and other adjuvants that are so toxic to our bodies. They're trying to physically change us into something else, which is exactly what happened in the book of Genesis. These demons, they're deceivers. Remember, Satan 
It's father of lies. The Bible called John, Jesus himself called these guys out in the book of John. They, they create an inversion of the natural order of God. What is up is down. They use upside down crosses and pyramids. Uh, what they love is hate. Okay, the, the Bible says that Lucifer is here to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. We've got to understand that, Dave. He's not here to do anything positive for anybody. That's why he doesn't care if he's killing 200 species a day on the planet that are going permanently extinct, never to be seen again. He doesn't care about that because he's an antithesis to God. Whatever God tried to do, Lucifer tries to destroy. That's why he tries to destroy us. These demons and their human followers are obsessed with death because it is an inversion of life. Plus, this is why this is what Alistair Crowley talked about so much. Plus, when the sacrifices or they, when they sacrifice or they sodomize a human or a child, energy is created via light photons that these entities actually consume. That's why it says that Satan runs about as a roaring lion seeking those who he may devour. Hence, abortion, pedophilia, human sacrifice, all of these things are all to create energy in this field that they're in. Because remember, this, this next dimension is right next uh, to us. Back in the Old Testament with Baal and with Moloch. They were constantly sacrificing children and infants. They were sacrificing virgins, which were young girls. You know, they're six or seven-year-old young girls before puberty. These Satanists worship these fallen ones, and it's all about destroying and killing their father's children or, or, God, or Yahweh's children. Jesus call, called them out in the book of John again, and God's, God's order, natural order is life and have life in abundance. This is why these demons don't want Anything to survive. They want to destroy all of these different species every single day. Look at Fukushima, Dave. We have the technology to shut Fukushima down, but we don't because they don't want it shut down because it's killing the entire Pacific Ocean. Look at the GMOs. We talked about them a second ago. The chemtrails, the vaccines, the fluoride, the trans fats, the aspartame, the pornography. Everything that destroys or debilitates the mind is their mantra. Just like their father, Lucifer, who came to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. It's again, it's again basically a death cult. All of this pollution and destruction of the environment is what it wants because that is its nature and its reality is it's trying to create its own type of universe over again on this planet. It is at war with Yahweh. Don't forget this. It, it is, this, this war in heaven has been continuing through the millennial I mean, it's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. And we have to understand that the, when Lucifer came here, he came here to destroy God's creation. But Yahweh has come to bring life and bring that life more abundantly. These people who follow them are psychopaths, sociopaths. They have no empathy, no remorse, no shame, no sympathy. They're pathological liars, which, again, is an inversion of the truth. They're basically parasites. There's no limit as to what they will do because they have no emotional consequences for their actions. That's why they can go into Libya. They can go into Benghazi. Uh, they can go into Syria. They can go into Iraq, and they can bomb the living crap out of these people over there and kill millions of people, Dave, and they don't care because they have no emotional consequences for their, action, for their actions. Perfect example, the Babylonian banking system, the Federal Reserve, total parasites. They go into a country. They enslave its people through a Federal Reserve Bank, through a fiat money. They steal the resources, no remorse, only greed, because their father, again, is death. Because they have this whole thing, it's the love of money, is the root of all evil, and these guys are completely and totally obsessed with greed. Let's look at the Garden of Eden, Dave, and compare that to the movie Avatar. You know, we all saw the movie Avatar came out a few years ago. They had this beautiful garden on this planet, and all of a sudden, this they, they brought these demons in, in the shape of their own people, these transmorph demons they manufactured to try to get and try to get the people to trust them, and they and they came in to break and destroy the to destroy the planet and to kill these people. That's kind of like Lucifer's mantra. God created a beautiful garden and Satan came in to destroy and to steal it. Now Lucifer is to change trying to change the frequency to separate you from God, your internal frequency which allows you to be one with God through the Holy Spirit when you accept Jesus Christ, to overload your energy field to prevent you from seeing the truth and obtaining synchronicity with God. That's the filling of the Holy Spirit is when we obtain synchronicity with God through Christ, we end up with a resonance match. That's so important. The Bible says it this way, that a veil has been placed over the mind of the unbeliever by Lucifer, the God of this world, to prevent this from happening. What we don't get is this. When we accept Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ continually redeems us and restores our DNA. When that happens, it allows the Holy Spirit to come into us and to go to God on the throne, create a blood covenant with God through Christ, 
and it creates a resonance or frequency match, allowing the Holy Spirit to infill us so we become one with God. This is something that's so simple, Dave, but most Christians never get. And it's that oneness with God that allows him to share part of his omnipotence, omnipresence and omniscience with us, which allows us to have authority over these demonic entities. Last week, I had a dear friend of mine. She has a huge website that's alternative news, and she was raised by atheists, and she's never been exposed to Christianity. Now, I'm going to say this for all the folks that are listening right now who aren't Christians. She's a wonderful person. I really like her, but she's been looking because she doesn't understand what's going on. Because if you look at what I'm talking about today, and you don't see it as what I'm telling you that it is, in which we have a group of interdimensional parasites that are using the planet for food, and there's no hope. And all we end up doing is guess, getting, be, getting to be recycled every time we die, be kind of like an ever-ready battery. Then there's really no hope for any of us, and there's no way out of this mess. That's what the secular humanistic people teach. And so it's a huge mess because they have no answers. But when God saw what was going on on the planet and what Lucifer was doing, he basically allowed himself – to be duplicated. That's why it says in the book of Hebrews that, he, that Jesus is the exact representation of God Almighty. That entity was put into Mary. So, she, so, so Jesus was born of, a, born of a man, was raised in the flesh. But remember, it was still God's exact representation. And if you read in the book of Enoch, it talks about how the Son of Man was walking with God. This was way before Jesus Christ basically came to our planet. You can read that in the book of Enoch, which I know is not... You know, in a, you know, you know, a canonized text, it's apocryphal, but you can read through it and get a little understanding about this. But what's nice about all of this stuff is when God brings Jesus to you, he allows you, if you accept Christ for who he is, through the blood of Jesus, through the residence lock and through the scalar waves that the blood creates, it allows you to be restored to the righteousness of God through Christ. And it allows you to become one then with the creator of the universe, the frequency of the Holy Spirit comes in you. And see, this is so important that you understand this as a Christian and who you are and the power and the authority that you've been given. We have no idea what we are in this creation, I mean, how powerful we are because of the blood covenant. It's kind of like in the, in the movie, The Outlaw Josie Wales. At the end of the movie, there's this big Indian chief, and they're about to kill each other. Josie and this Indian chief are about to kill each other. And then what they do, Dave, you may remember this, the, the Indian chief makes a pact with Josie Wales. The Indian chief cuts his hand, Josie Wales cuts his hand. They slap their hands together, and they create what's called a blood covenant. That blood covenant is what God did with us through Christ, which means that everything God has is now ours, and everything we have now is now God's, and we become one with God. That's a blood covenant. And when that happens, it creates a resonance lock with us, and it allows the Holy Spirit to fill us, and we become one with God through the Holy Spirit, through the blood of Christ. That's the beauty of the story of Jesus. Now, here's what's interesting. I had told us, so I spoke with this lady who had this website the other day, and you could tell she was searching because she was so frustrated there was no answer to what she had found out about all of this. And so I said this to her, and now guys, listen to me if you're not saved, and if you believe in aliens and spaceships and all that kind of stuff. If you look online and Google it, it says that if you call on the name of Jesus or Yeshua during a alien abduction or if these fallen angels or these entities are messing with you, they have to stop what they're doing and put you back where they found you and leave you alone. Now, here's why. They didn't. Know, they then know that you basically are in covenant with God Almighty. And what they don't want, Dave, is they don't want Yahweh or Yeshua to show up where they are and start killing them. Because remember what happened when the demons were in that boy. And Jesus said, oh, no, you know, the guys, they, 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 he was going to cast them into the pit. And they said, no, send us into the swine instead. Don't send us into the pit. And Jesus cast them out. And they had to go. They know that he has power and authority over them. The same thing is true in the, in the, in, throughout the New Testament when people would call in the name of Jesus and drive out the demons. That's the power that we have as Christians, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Those aren't just words. Those aren't, that's not a metaphor. He really means that when he says that because we can create anything we want in this holographic reality we're in by the words that we speak and by the thoughts that we think, including changing the planet. When we, when we prayed on my show, your show, and Hagman's show for Hillary Clinton to be fully exposed before this election was out, and then on Wednesday before the election, all of a sudden Steve Penichek comes on and says that they're not going to allow Hillary to become president. 
they're not going to allow it to happen. That the, you know, the, the top people in the government decided against it because they knew the election had been hacked. And then they fully exposed everything that she was doing. That on Thursday, she canceled her fireworks the next day. And on Friday, we had the Podesta emails come out about the soul cooking. So in other words, they were letting everybody know that they were willing to fully expose her. And of course, what happened is enough people knew, the government knew. And then John Kerry gets called down to Antarctica, number four in line for the White House, gets called down to Antarctica for the election. Now, what's interesting about this, Dave, and I thought about this is the last time we, you and I talked about this. We don't know if they told Obama, the vice president, the speaker of the House, hey, if you don't do what you're supposed to do on this one, you guys are all going to just like disappear and we're going to go ahead and put John Kerry into power down, you know, over the United States. They don't know what they were told, but all I, all I know is this. They followed their marching orders and Hillary Clinton was a shoe in to win this election and she was defeated handily. And the actual I don't believe for one second that it had not been for the amount of fraud that was going on that she would have won the popular vote. So there's a major thing that happened in our, in our world with the election of Donald Trump. Now, is Donald Trump going to do what he said he's going to do? I don't know, Dave. You asked me this last summer if I trusted Donald Trump 100 percent. I told you absolutely not. I only trust Yeshua and Yahweh 100 percent and the word of God 100 percent. I don't trust these men, these men on this planet because they're they're liable to do something they shouldn't ought to do or they may be threatened and they decide to do something they shouldn't ought to do. I don't know what's going on with that. But I want to share with you about the energy field that we're in and how we can receive a frequency energetic resonance match when we accept Christ. And so when I told this lady who had the website that if you call on the name of Yeshua or Jesus, you were put back into your into your home, she goes, that's absolutely the truth. You're right. I've read that and I've seen that. I've researched it. I said, that's right. And I said, that tells you who he is. It's the power of Yeshua, of Jesus. And she said, I never looked at it this way, Ted. You're right. Then she, I asked her, I said, well, do you know how to become saved? Do you know how to accept Jesus Christ? And she said, I've never been asked that before. No, I don't know how to do that. So I led her through the sinner's prayer, Dave, and she accepted Jesus right on the spot. When I showed her the authority and the power we've been given, and I explained to her the gospel from this way, from an energy field way, and she said to me, she said it so succinctly, she said, Ted, I've read about this before, and I've talked about this to people before, but they never explained it to me from a scientific standpoint of how the resonance fields match up. She goes, and I understand that we're beings of energy, and I understand what Jesus was now, who he was, that he was the Son of God. And I said, that's right. That's who he was. And so she accepted Jesus right on the spot. So, guys, if you're listening to me today and you don't know who Jesus Christ is, all you have to do is pray, Dear Lord, please forgive me for my sins. I need you. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that God created him. He's born of the Virgin Mary. That he was crucified, dead, and buried, and God raised him from the dead. And he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty right now. I repent from my old sins, Lord, and I ask you to, I ask you to come into my heart right now, and I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, that's how simple it is for you to receive it, to become born again. That's what the Bible talks about, how you must be born again. You have to be willing and obedient to be born again. It can't be done by your parents or somebody else that you knew who prayed for you when you were an infant, when you got baptized. That's not what this is about. This is a residence lock that you as an individual has to be given to you. It says there, it says in the book of, I believe it's Colossians, that it's because of the, your faith in God and in Jesus Christ that you're set free and that you're saved. So anyhow, let me go ahead and finish this. We are beings of energy. That's how biological transmutation works. We pull energy out of the frequency that we are in. This is so important. The demons are of the same are the same way. They pull energy out of the field they're in too, but they cannot use God's energy because they're separated from God, Dave. They can't get energy from Yahweh, the creator, any longer. So they have to distort the energy through child sacrifice, abortion, war, hate, suffering, just to feed themselves. The low vibrational energy is what they consume. That's why they use child sacrifice, and it's always been demanded by them. This is also what pedophiles do. Again, are they are a distortion of the natural order of God. It's kind of like the movie The Matrix. The machines are using the energy from human beings to run their metallic society. That's kind of like they do. The demons create this negative light photonic energy to feed themselves. Satan runs about as a roaring lion. Again, remember that, seeking those who he may devour. That's why war and abortion is c controlled and it's created. That's why there's this never-ending war on terror to feed these demonic entities. The problem is stress from these events create you know, the energetic distortions. That's why it causes sickness and disease and hatred and bitterness and jealousy and envy. They all distort your natural energy field, elevating cortisol, which stops your digestion and leads to disease, cancer, and arthritis. Let me explain what that means. If you have 
bitterness in your heart, especially now we have people have, have, that, I, that I know that have been angry at their father or their mother or their cousin or their uncle for the past 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. And these people have cancer. These people have heart disease. These people have diabetes. They're bitter. They have arthritis conditions. Every time you create an energetic field as an antithesis to God's energetic field because of your thoughts and your actions, because you're speaking all this negative stuff about somebody else, what happens is you, you, you decrease your body's own frequency. When that happens, you create disease inside of your own body. This is why people come down with cancer who are so bitter. This is why they come down with heart disease. Now, we know that heart disease is an inflammatory condition. We know that as far as with the arteries and the placking of the arteries. We know that. Now, it's not cholesterol. It's inflammation. And this inflammation, this bitterness and anger causes inflammation, which causes your arteries to plaque. Right now, as we do this show, right now, I have a neighbor whose wife is in the hospital having a quadruple bypass surgery right now, today. And she is unbelievably bitter, unbelievably angry. She has no forgiveness in her heart. She hates people, hates individuals. It's the kind of neighbor who drives by and they won't even wave at you or smile at you, and you're waving and smiling at them, just angry and bitter, acts like they're 12 years old their entire life. That's what happens to your body when you elevate your cortisol because you're in a flight or fight syndrome, stress-related mode. This is what happens, and your body starts to create these negative energy fields inside of your body. And you start creating inflammation because of that energy field. And that inflammation then causes these arteries to start getting plaqued up. The same thing happens with cancer. Especially with cancer, you can't digest your nutrients anymore because you're always in an angry state. And you can't get the vitamin D, C, E, all the antioxidants, selenium. It can't get through the digestive process, which helps to maintain the physical structure of the body that you live in. So you can't get the nutrients to your cells or the antioxidants. So your body comes down with cancer. Cancer is another one of those diseases that in many cases, Dave, is not only dietary related, lifestyle related, but it's emotionally related because of bitterness and anger. And see, remember this. If you're, if you're mad at somebody, you're not hurting that person because they don't really necessarily even know you're mad at them. I remember years ago, my grandfather died back in 1970, 19, 1970. And I remember I had a PE teacher that made me do a bunch of PE right after my grandfather died. And I just got back from the funeral and all the other stuff that was going on. And I stayed upset with this guy for years, years about this. And he made me do this because, you know, I'm like 15 years, 14 years old. And I remember years later, I, I said something to him about it. He didn't even remember it. He didn't even know he had done it. He apologized for doing it. Didn't even remember the incident at all. And that's how we live our lives in some cases, Dave. We get so mad at somebody that we can't forgive them. And we don't have forgiveness in our hearts. And that is the seed of disease, the seed of cancer. We've got to learn to forgive people, especially people that are dead. If somebody really did you wrong and they hosed you and they're dead and gone now, what in the world is it going to do you any good to talk bad about that person, down, badmouth that person, and get angry every time you think about that person? Think through this with me. Now, even in their death, they're affecting you. Are you kidding me? They've controlled you all of your life because of the anger you have towards them. Why are you allowing them to control them? Just ask them, ask for forgiveness. Father, forgive me for the way I've done and the way I feel about this person. Thank you, Father. I forgive them for all they've done to me. In Jesus' name, I pray. That's all you've got to do, and the Holy Spirit will lift that away. The lady who got saved the other day, she said to me, Dave, she said, she sent me an email back. She goes, I don't even know how to say this. She goes, I've never felt peace before. And I have such tremendous peace in my heart right now. I cannot tell you how I feel the peace that has come upon me. That's why the Bible says when you accept Christ, when you get a resonance lock frequency with the Holy Spirit to Yahweh himself through Christ, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, what ends up happening is you receive a peace that passes all understanding as long as you keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's what the word says. And a lot of guys, listen to me for a second. That's how you have to live your life because God doesn't want you to be in a situation where you're angry at people all the time. He wants you to walk in forgiveness and in love because remember, love basically and forgiveness, it stops this cycle. You know, I've got a brother in Iowa who's still mad at my dad, Dave, for something that happened 70 years ago. It's ridiculous. My father's been dead since 84. We have to realize this entire lifestyle, when you get angry like this, is an inversion of what we had in the Garden of Eden. Uh, Michael Eldner said it this way. That he probably said it. He said, he said, he said, I like this quote he used. He said, he said, look at it. Just look at us. Everything is backwards. Everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health. Lawyers destroy justice. Universities destroy knowledge. Governments destroy freedom. 
and the major media destroys information, and religions destroy spirituality. Inversion is everywhere against the natural order. Because remember what Sabbatain Levy said back in the 1600s. He was the man who claimed to be the Jewish Messiah. He became a full working blown Satanist. And he said, you got to turn everything upside down from his philosophy, which is basically the occult philosophy that had also been passed through the Druids. He also brought in the Rothschild banking cartel in the 1700s through Jacob Frank. And these guys have been doing this ever since then. That's why Hollywood comes out with such incredible filth. Because remember, the folks in Hollywood that control Hollywood, they're, 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 they're basically these Sabbateans, and they absolutely loathe Jesus Christ. They loathe Christianity. That's why they do everything they possibly can to destroy everything that God's created. That's why when you go to the movies, they're absolutely filthy. Uh, the other day we saw a pretty good movie. It was called Passengers, and it was a new movie. It was like a, a spaceship that was a you know cruise ship, and it was a good movie. I mean, there was, there was a little bit of sexy stuff in it, but it wasn't really overt like you'd see on some of these R-rated movies. Very few bad words in it. Really, really good acting. A good plot. Hollywood hated it. The critics slammed it. I went to see the movie, and I thought, okay, it's okay. It's already it's, it's pretty clean. It's pretty nice. Incredible special effects. But they hated it. Why? It wasn't filthy enough. It wasn't inverted enough. It didn't have enough f filthy language in it. Guys, this is what they do. That's why some movies are really good movies, a good plot. They've got to throw the gratuitous sex in there. They've got to throw all the GDs and all the F-bombs and all the stuff they throw in there just to try to make it as filthy and perverted as they possibly can. That's not of God. And remember, all of that stuff is from Lucifer. These entities are, in reality, very. This, and these entities are again, in, a re, in reality, very close to ours. This is one of the purposes of CERN to literally change our reality to become closer to theirs. Also, to open portals into our reality, allowing them entry into our reality. There's a reason that Google, Dave, had 427 meetings with Obama in the White House during the past eight years. I'm going to repeat this: Google has had 427 meetings with Obama at the White House. Because they're working on creating all of this energy to try to enslave us. They're working with Singularity University and with NASA to accomplish these goals. Kurzweil has said that by 2030, human beings will be connected into the cloud through brain implants. This will facilitate the energy exchange and free thought will stop. Once we're connected to the AI, which is a computer connected interdimensionally to Lucifer himself, we're going to actually be connected directly into these entities for information and energy exchange. They will create a subhuman race, not a superhuman race, a human that can be controlled by Lucifer through the AI connection into the cloud. Ask you, ask you, everybody, everybody ask yourself a question. Autistic children. We literally have hundreds of thousands of autistic children right now in the United States, if not more, or partially autistic or somewhat mentally impaired because of immunizations, because of nagalase, because of aluminum, because of a mercury, because all of the stuff we're injecting into these children. Why are there so many? The government knows that we're doing this to the children. They know how to stop it. One of the top FDA people, Thompson, came out three years ago and blew the whistle on the Food and Drug Administration and the CDC and said they had basically manipulated data showing that the MMR vaccine caused autism. Caused it. Now, you can look this up. And they have silenced him, not even allowed him to do any type of testimony in court, which is against his First Amendment right. Why? Because they know how to stop this autistic onslaught. But why do they want autistic children? Because these are open vessels for demonic control. The government knows this. The government knows how to stop autism. Brad Street and Gonzalez, when they worked on this, the natural health practitioners a few years ago, they died on covering Nagalase and what was going on with these kids. The government knows exactly what's happening with it. The CIA knows. They don't care, Dave, because these children are vessels. Humans won't be able to think without the cloud within 20 to 30 years, which will be controlled interdimensionally, again, through the quantum computers, through Lucifer. No free thinking. Just the energy vampires, fallen angels, and the demons controlling humanity in human consciousness. That's why we have to have Jesus Christ living in us. That's why there's been a massive attack against Christianity all over the planet. That's why Christian values and principles have been destroyed, because they know that we're the only ones that have an answer to any of this. I mean, Buddha is in his grave. Muhammad is in his grave. Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. Our entire calendar proves that, and he sits at the right hand of God Almighty. And through his energy and through his blood, we're basically brought back into resonance with God. 
That's the only answer we have. They're putting nanobots, smart dust, into everything. They're infusing everything to become part of this new cyber reality. They're putting it in the rocks. They're putting it into the trees. They're doing everything with the smart dust. Look at the chemtrails, the GMOs, the Morgellons. These demons want to control and create a synthetic world with synthetic people connected to a Luciferian AI system, period. That's who's controlling the deal. But we are waking up, praise God. Christians are waking up because greater is he who is in us than he was in the world. These Luciferians or the Illuminati or the Council of 300 or whatever you want to call them, they don't care about us trying to change this reality on our own because they know you can't, but they know you can do it through the blood of the Lamb. That's what they're mad about. That's what they're scared about. They're, they're concerned about this because they don't want you to know is about the knowledge of interdimensional physics. Because once you grasp that Jesus connects us back with God and that prayers are scalar waves and that change physical reality, they know the game is over and we take control just like we did in this last election. They understand that. That's why they're doing everything to destroy Christian culture globally, especially in the Muslim world. Because Christians have proven through Jesus and the Holy Spirit to change this world. The globalists want us to sleep. They don't want us to think. They want us to watch TV. They want us to stay in an alpha, in a theta wave brain state. They want us to believe that the first one, two, and three dimensions, depth, height, and width, is all that there is. When you, when you talk about CERN, they say to you, nothing to see here. Chemtrails, nothing to see here. AI, Morgellons, GMO, vaccines, fluoride, autism, smart dust, sexual perversion, drugs, soul cooking, satanic networks, secret societies, real prayer, transhumanism, nothing to see here. They, they don't want you to know what the real world is all about. They don't want you to realize what there, there is another level of reality. In fact, Eben Alexander died, and he basically came back from the dead. He was restored. He had, a, he had a near-death experience. He said while he was dead, this is his quote, Dave. He said he heard the sound of rhythmic pounding that was distant yet strong, a little like a heartbeat, but darker and more mechanical, like the sound of metal against metal, as if a giant subterranean blacksmith is pounding an anvil somewhere off in the distance, pounding so hard that the sound vibrated throughout the earth or the mud or whatever that is you are in a reptilian worm-like creatures were crowding past him and sometimes rubbing against him with their smoother spiky skins. Faces bubbles up out of the darkness and became ugly and threatening. The pounding intensifies and became like the work beat from some army of troll-like underground workers. He became aware of a smell, a little like feces, a little like blood, a little like vomit, a biological smell. In other words, of a biological death, not a biological life. This is what awaits the people who don't accept Christ as far as I'm concerned. This is what he talks about. These are these near-death experiences that so many people have had with similar types of visions. Now, I know one thing, Dave. If I wasn't born again, if I wasn't saved, and I had a near-death experience, and I saw something like this, I'd be going to church pretty doggone quick trying to figure this out. But, guys, please, listen. Let's talk about this again with Genesis chapter 6. Let's talk about the genetic disc that was found in Columbia thousands of years old it has engraved in the disc are eggs and sperm in the birth process all of this in this genetic disc because why this type of technology has been around for a long long time it's coming back again we have it again that's why jesus said as it was in the days of noah so shall it be upon my return but now we can also use frequency to change again i mentioned this earlier russia is genetically using frequency to change physical dna in certain types of amphibians and reptiles, no gene spicing required. This is how demonic possession happens. The frequency of the entity enters the human and starts to change the human. Remember, again, we are basically a holographic energy field. They can change facial features. They have tremendous strength via these changes. You know, and the, remember, the, remember this. This is so. Remember the movie The Huntsman. Evil came into the world, and it changes reality. This ugly darkness and death. And they were telling us in that movie again what they're doing. Remember, these guys in Hollywood, these are all Sabbateans. These are all Luciferians. Almost all of these top people in these studios, they have a little thing that they have to do. They've got to tell you what they're planning on doing to you in advance. It's called their white magic or lesser magic. And it, otherwise, if they don't do that, they believe the karma on the other side is going to be really, really bad because you've got to agree with what they're going to do to you. And you have to agree to allow them to do it. So important, so important, Dave. Now, let's look at the serpent bloodlines that started back in Genesis or the royal bloodlines that a lot of people call them, like in the royal families over in England. Certain bloodlines are considered royal. You can see this still in England. Japan, the pre-war emperor there, considered royal, the sun god descendant. You know, the coats of arms usually have reptilian images. Why reptilian? Well, the Garden of Eden, you know, said Lucifer appeared as a snake. These bloodlines, it is speculated, are used because they're used as conduits or vessels to do the demonic will on earth. The book 
bloodlines and talks about the Rothschilds having Lucifer and a place setting at him at the dinner table every single night. They do the bidding of the demons. That's what these bloodlines are there for. It's kind of like using a vacuum hood in chemistry when you're back in, in college. You're trying to keep everything separated, but you have to have an intermediary to reach the side of the vacuum hood to do what you want to do. That's kind of like these guys do it. Scientists or humans are used to do the work, but the chemical is kept or this interdimensional entity is kept in the hood. An intermediary or surrogate person is used who has given themselves over to these entities or demons. This is one of the reasons that these bloodlines crossbreed all of the time. If you go to some of the castles in Europe, they're, they've been genetically changed, these people have been, to become these bloodlines of Lucifer, or they actually consider themselves to be the benign de Nephilim, sons of the fallen, and they trace their bloodline all the way back to Nimrod. They actually say this stuff. So they believe all of this stuff, and they're willing to die for it. In fact, if you've watched the movie or the TV show, Brad Metzler decoded, and watched the show on Spear of Destiny, he says this, that the guys who stole the Spear of Destiny considers themselves to be the benign de Nephilim day, sons of the fallen, and they're willing to die for it, and they believe this. This is how strongly they're willing to die for it and change the world because they want their god, Lucifer, to come in, brought into the temple in the Holy of Holies, to be pierced and to basically assume reign of the planet. Remember, that's very, very important. So a hierarchy is created to direct the population. This is the bloodlines to create low energy wars, famine, bitterness, hatred, hate the Muslims, hate the Jews, hate the Christians, hate everybody. Low energy vibration or continually feel the continue the think they can, this continually feeds these demonic entities. Again, this is why abortion, sacrifice, etc. is being used. Male, Moloch, serpent gods all orchestrated by the fallen ones to help feed them. Again, this is how they survive. These people have been cut off. These demons have been cut off by the creator. They are energy parasites requiring the sacrifice of innocence. Otherwise, they just simply they, they, can't, they can't feed themselves, Dave. It was so funny when they, when they pulled these, these entities out of these spaceships. We don't know what they were at Roswell. If you read the book, The Day After Roswell by Corso, these things had no digestive systems. They actually absorbed energy directly. These, these bloodlines, when you read the book and see that yourself, these bloodlines have a particular DNA, a kind of like a software program that we understand what physics is all about with the, the interdimensional physics. Why, this is why royal families interbred all of the time. They help to breed the psychopathic nature into these people. No empathy, no remorse, no emotional impact, no shame. They can bomb Dresden, Gaza, Iran, Iraq, Syria. They can kill millions again with no emotional impact because they were bred to do this because it is in their DNA. Now, I know we're running close on time, Dave. What do you want to do with the rest of this? Well, it's, we're such a cliffhanger point here. and We are. We are. Right, <laughs> yeah, we're right here. <coughs> Dad, let me, uh, let me do uh, – excuse me here is uh, – allergies kicking in like crazy <coughs> excuse me i wanted to say that i had this very discussion word for word the first 10 minutes of what you presented here tonight with my son last night in the go. car driving home from a movie because we saw dr strange and it had some sorcerers in there and i was explaining to him what he was actually looking at and he was surprisingly open and receptive to it um, he, he grasped it quickly. Of course, he's bright. He takes after his mother. Um, let's do this, Ted. I, I, if, if you have the time, I want to continue after the break. I want to take a commercial break here, and uh, we'll briefly talk about Health Masters, and then we'll come back after the break, and um, we'll go a little while longer, if that's okay with you. We'd love, cause I'd love to finish this presentation. It's, it's that important, Dave. we only got about 10 pages left. I agree. I agree. So let's do this. You know, this segment's been brought to you by Ted Brewer's Health Masters, and I am living proof that uh, Health Masters work. Ted kept me off the operating table, blood sugar issues, Doug Hagman, blood sugar issues. Uh, the testimonies are all there, and most of our audience has heard this before. Uh, Ted, let me um, um, tell people that they can go to healthmasters.com, and uh, they can order these great products, and I mean great products, and simply you can... Um, um, use the coupon code five Hodges to take 5% off. And I would recommend doing that as soon as possible because, uh, there's always a run on Ted's supplies when he comes on the air. Well, Ted, we're going to step aside here for just a moment. And, um, when we come back, we're going to come back in hour number two, and we're going to continue with this fascinating discussion. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll see you back here on the other side after a word from our sponsors and our top of the hour break.